What's good guys, today is a beautiful sunny day and I don't shoot like this all the time because I have like panda eyes but today we're having a look at Freewell ND filters and it's a perfect weather to test those. Let's go! So guys, little disclaimer, after we got robbed in Italy and my backpack with all the camera gear was stolen, I had no more ND filters, so all of the filters were gone and I wrote to Freewell and thank you so much Freewell company for supporting my channel, so they sent me for a review, not one, not two, but four different filters, ND64, the constant filter, ND32, ND, not ND, CPL filter, a polarization filter, and also a variable ND filter, two to five stops, which I'm using right now on the Nikon Z6 Mark II, shooting at f5 aperture and one over 50th shutter. So here it is in neutral profile. So how do you like the look? I hope I didn't overexpose my skin too much. I really hope so. So let's have a look at those filters more precisely, uh, what amount of light they cut and also do they have some kind of color cast and what is the build quality of the kit and all that stuff. So let's go. This wasn't a cloudy day guys, but sometimes the clouds do come into the shots. So right now let me show you the Freewell case. Here it is, I also shoot some b-roll for you. So here we have like five dividers, so you can put in five different filters. You can use the 82 millimeter filters in here, it's pretty big for those type of filters but right now I have only the 67 millimeter filters because the Nikon camera and 28 to 75 lens uses the 67 millimeters. The Svilchuk's lens also uses the 67 millimeter filters. My Tamron 17 to 70 my lens also uses 67 millimeters, so that is why I'm pretty okay with the 67 millimeter filter thread. And I do recommend you guys. Uh, a close um, to make to put a closer look at the 67 millimeters filters because they're not that expensive and a lot of camera lenses right now especially the Tamron lenses they do have this filter threat so here is the case love this case and now let's have a look how much light is being cut with this um, system and by the way guys uh, let me hit record on the camera so here we have a base which screws onto the filter thread of your lens. And here is the filter itself. It simply magnetically attaches. And also we have a metallic, pretty, <clears throat> pretty good quality uh, lens cap. So it also magnetically attaches. So you have a protection and it's a very fast way to switch filters if you need to. So here we have 67 and you can see that it reduces six stops of light, which is more than okay to shoot wide open right now it's at f4 because this part is white and it's hit by the sun directly but all in all i would easily use 1.4 with the 60 uh, nd64 uh, and if i shoot in slow motion with one over 100th of a second it's more than fine i even shot with the sony g master 1.2 lens 50 millimeter with the nd64 which i had previously and had no issues. So ND64 is great for shooting in direct sunlight. You can stop down just a little bit if you want to, but all in all ND64 is a great choice. ND32 is five stops of light, so it's okay for more of a cloudy weather. So if you have some clouds, ND32 and wide aperture like f1.4 or f1.8 would be also a great decision. So here we have our white board and we are going to uh, make the custom white balance right here on the camera. That is why I need to switch off the recording because I cannot do it while recording. And now let's go into custom white balance mode and we'll white balance through this part. So right here I have 5700 Kelvin and no magenta green or something uh, shifts. But if I put the filter off and uh, let me adjust the shutter speed so it's not blown out. So right now we have the shutter one over two thousandths of a second and it's not blown out. And let's set the white balance. And here we have 5600 Kelvin and no green magenta shift. And it means that basically those filters almost don't have a color cast. Let me say they do make the image slightly, slightly warmer, but it's not really noticeable. And the cloud again is somewhere here. So big thumbs up for this. The variable ND filter does have a bigger a filter, uh, I mean color cast, which is okay for neutral density variable filters. It's a pretty common thing and we'll test it in a little bit. So right now guys, I've put on the ND32 filter, constant ND, and we have one over 100th of a second shutter, iris at f4 and ISO 800. And if I remove this filter, you can see that we have a lot of light coming in. So it reduces five stops. It's a great filter to use in the sunny weather with 
f2.8 f2 lenses it cuts pretty a lot of light let me say and also it's great to use in cloudy weather as well so nd64 more of a uh, sunny weather f1.4 f1.2 filter and the 32 nd is better for kind of um, overcast moody things for f2 f1.8 f2.8 lenses and I've done the tests and this ND32 also changes the white balance only for 1 or 200 kelvins. This is not a perfect white balance card, of course, it's not a great card, but all in all I can say that you'll be easily swapping those filters or shooting even without those without dramatically changing your white balance and you can adjust it in post if you need to, which is great. And the last filter I have in here is the circular polarizing filter. It's also magnetic, so if I attach this filter it does reduce a little bit, so let me check the settings so right here we're at f13 1 over 100th of a second iso 800 and if we detach this filter it is a little bit blown out as you can see let's put it back on so it's okay it reduces a little bit of light but it's used to uh, a different thing and you can by the way stack those filters together if i'm not mistaken so yeah, just like so, it magnetically attaches and you can stack the CPL filter and also the ND filter if you need to. And the CPL filters are used to enhance the sky color. If you shoot at 90 degree angle to the sky, it reduces some reflections, uh, like from the windows, some from water. I'll show you some examples as well. And this CPL filter also doesn't have a color cast. I've done the test and uh, it's pretty minor, like 100 kelvins. Um, it's pretty good so optically those three filters are great no color casts pretty good quality big thumbs up for it free will did a great job and guys it's a bit cloudy right now but i've switched the filter uh, right here on this lens it's a variable nd filter two to five stops right now it's a minimum and let's get to five stops and as you can see here we are at five stops so it reduces a lot of light and i've run the tests and it's about 400 kelvins warmer so if you used to shoot at 5500 kelvin outdoors during the sun or 5600 kelvin you need to set on your camera about 5100 or 5000 kelvin to compensate the warmth but it's not a green magenta shift whatsoever i've tested it in a lot of different situations so all in all this filter does uh, cast some warmth, but it's not something with green magenta issues, which is great. And all in all, it's okay for a variable ND filter. And also it's a pretty slim filter. And as you can see in the corners of the shot right here, we don't have any vignetting or any issues with any of those filters. They're super slim, as you can see right here, guys. So guys, it's cloudy again, and I have to wrap up this review. So all in all, I really enjoyed the filters from Freewell. They're thin, they're lightweight, really high quality, no color cast whatsoever, no green magenta issues, a little bit of um, warmer tint to the variable ND, but it's okay for variable ND, so I highly recommend you checking out those filters. So I'll leave the links down below, of course. If you did enjoy this video, guys, please smash the like and subscribe buttons and the notifications bell. And if you do use different filters and why you use different filters, just share your information in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Oleg Nikitin and I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care. Bye.